Hi everyone, so in a few days I'm going to a Stamping Up retreat and we've been asked to make a project to put out on display. So this is the project I'm making. Now, it's not my project. This was something that I saw several weeks ago, um, Erica Serwin, who's a Stamping Up demonstrator in the US make. And I just happened to be in my local B&M store the other day and I saw this packet of Twinkies on the shelf and she used Twinkies for her project. Now I think hers were for, I think it might have been like a fall, autumn gift. And I think hers were pumpkin pie flavor. This was the only box sat on the shelf. So I figured it was there just waiting for me to come and buy it. And these are basically just, it just says golden sponge with a creamy cake filling. So. That's what I'm going to be using. No doubt other things will fit in this box, but that's what I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using Turtle Friends. And I want to use this paper from our July to December mini catalogue. Now it's, it's actually Christmas paper. It goes with the whimsical trees. And I want to use the presents, but I'm not making a Christmas gift if you like so I'm going to be doing some fussy cutting with these and I'll show you what I've actually done just to save some time. I've got my notes. I'm going to be using Mossy Meadow. It's not a colour I would normally use but and but it's in the colours that's in the whim, whimsical tree. So in the whimsical tree you've got Polish Pink, Blushing Bride, Mossy Meadow, mint macaron misty moonlight and then just like iridescent and these are literally all all my colors i love this i love this color palette so as soon as i saw this paper in the catalog i knew that was definitely going to be on my shopping list for christmas projects but as i say mossy meadow isn't normally a color i use but i'm going to use it as I say, she used completely different colours. I can't remember what colour she actually used, but they were oranges or yellows, I can't remember. So, with my first piece of card, so this is the biggest piece of card, this is nine and three quarters by seven. On the nine and three quarter side, I'm going to score it at one and a quarter, two and a half, seven and a quarter, and eight and a half then I'm going to rotate it to the seven inch side and I'm going to score it at one and a quarter two and a half four and a half and five and three quarters So that's the first piece. For my second piece, this is four and seven eighths by seven and a quarter. On the seven and a quarter inch side, I'm going to score it at two and one eighth, three and three eighths, five and a half, and six and three quarters. Okay, so what I have done just to try this, I tried, I just cut a, the big piece of card down out of scrapbook paper and scored it just to make sure that it, it looked correct. And this is kind of what we're working to from this piece of card. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold and burnish all these score lines because that gives your projects a nice professional finish. If you've not got a bone folder, just please add one onto your next order. They, they are worth every penny. They really are. They help, you know, you can score with them as well. But they just do help making all your card making and, you know, your folding so much easier. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get a pen because you're not going to see these marks, but basically... With the piece of card, with the short side across and, you know, in the like portrait orientation, if you like, you're going to cut away 
the outside three squares in each of the four corners. So that one, that one, and that one, that one, that one, and that one, and the same at the bottom. And you're keeping this one. So I'm gonna bring in my scissors. And the way I like to do it, the ones that haven't I haven't put the mark on are going to be your glue tabs. So they need to be freed from this piece of card at some point anyway. So the way I like to do it is cut up right up to that second score mark, cut the bottom two off and then just cut this one away. It doesn't matter how you do it, so long as you leave the one nearest to these rectangles you'll be fine and then I'm going to notch them in a bit just to make them a little bit tidier so I'm going to just do the same here so I'm going to cut up to the second you can do it this way as well you can cut up this way cut off cut this one off so can you see that's what you're left with it looks like that and then as I say we're gonna I'm gonna notch them so I'm just gonna do the same on the opposite side right I'm just gonna bring in my smaller scissors because they're a little bit easier for me to use so these four sections now that you left are going to form your glue tabs so I'm going to um, give them a trim just so that they go into the box a bit better. And this is where if you've not cut up, you know, tightly enough, this is where you can cut those score marks away. So I'm just going to cut on an angle. And you can even chop a bit off here if you want. If, you, if your box, when you try and kind of dry fit it, if it doesn't look as though it's going to go together pro properly, you can even just chop a little bit off. It doesn't matter. No one's going to see it because it's going to be on the inside. So I'm going to cut them at an angle and then just chop a little bit away. And then turn it round. I find it's easier to fold the middle bit out of the way so I don't cut that by mistake. Okay, so that's what we're left with. So now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put adhesive on these four tabs. Now you could, I would normally use wet glue for a 3D project, but I'm going to be using my Stampin' Seal Plus just because I'm doing it on video. And also I think the Stampin' Seal Plus is strong enough that it will hold this project together. So I'm just going to put glue on the tabs. And I'm using my silicone mat because even if I come off the edge of this cardstock onto the mat, nothing sticks to this silicone mat. So it's really good. So I'm just going to fold those back because that's I've just gone over the edge with the adhesive. So now what you do is you bring in your sides and these flaps are going to fasten to this section here. So. I'm just going to do one at a time so I'm going to bring that one in and this one in and you're lining up the cut edge of this side panel with the with the fold of the flap this is very sticky our stamping seal so it's actually sticking to me so I'm just going to fold that one up and fold that one in and I hope that the Twinkies that are sold in the UK are the same size as the ones that are sold in the US else this isn't even going to fit in my box so now what you need to do these are like reinforcement sides so you just need to add some adhesive on here because these are going to fold in But 
it doesn't matter which way round you do it I don't think you just reinforce in your box so I'm going to fold those in and push them in and then fold in the long sides and then I'm going to get my bone folder and I'm just going to burnish all four of the sides okay so that's that part done so now you need this one so this one again I'm just going to fold on the score lines the skinny one is the glue tab so I'm going to just cut on an angle you'll see you've got four sections and then this one's your glue tab so this is going to glue together like so and this is going to become the top of the box so what I'm going to do now from the whimsy paper I've cut a piece of this paper that's got like the foiling and the hollies on one side and on the other side it's pink I'm going to use that so I'm going to position that So this is going to go together like that so this seam's going to be at the back so this is going to be the front so I'm going to position this on here and this panel I I'll tell you what size I've cut it at four and a half by one and three quarters and then from my stitch nested label dies I've actually I cut two because I wasn't sure what size I wanted to use so I cut this one and this one and I think I'm going to use the bigger one this one I may put a stamped greeting on it so I may use that I'm not sure yet so <clears throat> this is what I'm thinking I'm thinking that I'm going to put this on here and then I've got the elements that I've cut from the paper and I've got my turtle so I think what I'll do I'll put this together first so let me just come back to my stamping seal plus and then you should be able to just fold this over get rid of that so if this has been done properly this should fit inside here and that's my little box like a, a match box style okay so let's just take that out for now so this I'm thinking is going to sit on here somehow as I say, I've not made this and she, you know, used a, a completely different set of paper and card and dies. I'm going to bring in my turtle and I know Flirty Flamingo isn't in the paper that I'm using, but I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo and I'm going to colour the shell, which I've already put on my block from the stamp set and I'm going to do that in polished pink so I'm just going to colour this in quickly just gonna stamp his shell and then these are my little elements that I've cut out from the paper and 
On these two in particular, not sure how well you're going to see this, but they have holly leaves coming out of them. So what I've done, I've fussy cut and I've cut out the holly leaves because as I say, this isn't necessarily going to be a Christmas project. And then I've cut the little bird, the turtle and the bird I cut with my scan and cut. I've stamped that in mint macaron because that's a colour that's in the paper. And I've done a little bow tie which I've stamped in mint macaron as well. So they're kind of my elements and it's just a case now of working out how I'm going to put them on here. So my thinking is that I'm going to put my little turtle and maybe put the little bird on his back. And then these gifts, I was thinking that I could kind of line up. I've got, I think that's Mossy Meadow in that one to kind of tie in. And maybe, you know, kind of put them kind of like so and put the little bow tie on him or on her or it could be a bow in the hair you know however you want to do it I might do it in a hair actually so that's kind of what I'm thinking now in the stamp set there's this kind of like grassy bit here so what I'm going to do just to give my turtle a little bit of grounding on here I'm going to stamp the grass. So I'm just going to bring in, I'll use the other side of the block that I've already used. And I think I'll do it in mint macaron just to tie in with, you know, the elements I've done there. So just going to ink this up. Doesn't have to be perfect. My little presents won't be floating as well. So let's see. So I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. So I'm using various, you know, different um, adhesives for this project. But that's the beauty of stamping up. You know, we have all this adhesive for different projects. So... You might as well use it. So I'm going to pop that up there. The little bird, I think I'll sit on his back. So I'm going to use a mini dimensional on that one. Just kind of overlap him and sit him there. And then it's just how do I want to do the presents? So this one was literally, this is how it came off the sheet. This was right at the bottom. So like, you know, when the, when we do stamping off and this is the same with the, the designer series paper in another part of the paper, this is a bigger present, but this was like at the bottom of the sheet. So I thought I'd use it. So, you know, I could tuck that in. I'm just going to bring this back in because it'll give me more of an idea of where I'm going to put everything. So I'm going to put that like that. I think I'll put the bigger present at the back. And this one, I don't know whether to just kind of, I might pop that one up. So I've just got like a little few presents. In fact, I think that's how I'm going to do it. So... I'm going to stick this down and I think I'll stick this flat. So that's going to go on there. It's going to sit like so. That one's going to go flat as well. And if your adhesive doesn't want to start to roll when you're using these uh, Seal and Seal Plus, just start it off on your silicone mat. It won't stick to your mat and it rolls the adhesive around for you. And then that one, I think I'm just going to pop up there. So I'll use a big dimensional for that one. 
and pop that one up like that so we've got like a little stack of presents then the little bow I'm thinking I might put it in the hair so I am going to use some of our Tombow multi-purpose liquid just get it just getting it going on a bit of scrap on the side just going to put a little tiny dab on her head and just pop that on there like so so she's got like a little party bow in her hair and then find my Twinkies and let's see if they fit in the box and they do yay and then that's gonna go I've just got a little corner there that I just need to trim off it's obviously where I've just that's better okay so that's my little that's going to be my little table gift. I don't think I'm going to add any kind of a greeting on it, but I think what I will do is bring in some embellishments and we'll just give it a little bit of embellishing and see what we've got. So I've got some in colour um, rhinestones, I've got some pearls, I've got some basic white. I think I'll go with these actually. So, let me find my take your pick tool. I'm going to pick up one of these pale green and I'm just going to pop that right in the middle of a bow. And then I think just maybe scatter a couple of those. So that's it. What do you think? I think it's turned out quite cute, actually. Um, and as I say, not my idea. Thank you to Erica Sirwin for the idea. So please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.